Shalom, this is Sister Wenda. I hope that all of you are enjoying the broadcast that you're listening to right now. We appreciate each and every last one of you, our faithful listeners and supporters of the Straightway Truth radio broadcast. We try to make sure that we do our due diligence and do our best to ensure that you have the best broadcast as well as the truth coming to you in the hour that we're living in right now. If you would like to help us in this endeavor, your offering will be greatly appreciated in the work of the Ministry of the Most High Yah. Our mailing address for your gift, offering, or letter of support is Charles Dowell, Jr. That's Charles Dowell, Jr. And Dowell is spelled D-O-W-E-L-L. 506 Ellington Drive. Ellington is spelled E-L-L-I-N-G. T-O-N, P.O. Box 32, Lafayette, Tennessee, and Lafayette is spelled L-A-F-A-Y-E-T-T-E, 37083. Again, our mailing address is Charles Dowell, Jr., 506 Ellington Drive, P.O. Box 32, Lafayette, oh, man, I got Tennessee, mm. 37083. If you would like to contact us by way of phone, mm. the country code is 1, area code 615-688-3025. That's 1, 615-688-3025. You may leave a message there and... Be the Father's will, we will do whatever we can to try to return your message. It is our hope and our prayer that as you continue to listen to the Straightway Truth Ministry, and as you apply the teachings of this ministry, that you are finding peace and growth within you, your family, and life as well. Please tell others so that the truth may also have an impact and touch others' lives so that they may enjoy the benefits of the truth of Jesus Christ just like we all are. Shalom, the king is coming. All right, Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shalom, Israel. Greetings, teaching every last one of you. In the sweet presence of strong and victorious and mighty overcoming name, while soon coming King Yahshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ. <clears throat> um, I don't mean to be a disappointment tonight. Uh, it's just that I am extremely, extremely tired. We've had a couple of festivities we had to deal with here on the land this week, and I didn't get home last night. Uh, until about midnight and I didn't get to sleep well and stuff so I do want to make sure I'm refreshed for Shabbat morning to be able to minister the word of truth to those Israelites so I probably will be on the broadcast um, here tonight no more than maybe an hour okay so we're going to go ahead and get started and get the things that need to be said and in necessary often you've been hearing me say a lot lately um, on videos on YouTube videos and, and I would like to say, could y'all please try to let those ads, I have to bring a reminder every once in a while, let the ads play so we can make a few Federal Reserve notes to help pay the bills. Um, but often you hear me say, stop doing what you're doing and please listen. And I, and I really truly begin to understand the reason why I'm saying such things. Uh, because faith come by hearing. And here it comes by the word of Yah. And our problem today is we have too many distractions in this world. We have too many thoughts that are going through our minds, too many things that are vying for our attention that's doing everything it can to keep the word of Yah from entering into us. And you know what? We have to hear the word of Yah. It's, this is all for the benefit of our soul. This is all for the saving of our soul. Um, we have a short time allocated to us here in this life. And then after this is the judgment. So it behooves us to hear um, whenever we have sound doctrine, sound preaching, and sound teaching uh, given to us. It really truly does because it's a benefit to you, 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 and yours. I'm hearing from a lot of new people. A lot of Israelites are going to be here at Pesca, uh, the Feast of Unleavened Bread, Hak, Mazak, and um, um, Passover. Uh, here straightway, we are excited and elated, and we're already making room and moving things around to make sure we can accommodate you, you, and you. 
We are excited and elated because the debt season is almost over. We're almost at the turn of our year. Uh, when life starts to come back in, we are making moves to prepare the gardens and everything else and really to receive you. It, it, it's going to be such a joy to be able to see each and every last one of you. Hug your face. Hug your face. Kiss your face. Hug your necks. Hallelujah. But, um, you know, I've been talking a lot lately about spiritual warfare, and I want y'all to listen to me. While some of us, we want to know the truth about spiritual warfare. We want to know about the spirits and the enemy that we're up against. You have to be informed that it's really truly not all that pleasant speaking about spiritual warfare. Because speaking about spiritual warfare exposes things about ourselves that we've never, ever, ever even considered before in our lives. And it's a very painful thing. And speaking about spiritual warfare has this uncanny ability to be able to wear out the patience of the saints and run people away. Uh, simply because... Uh, simply because a lot of people do not have an enduring substance. A lot of people just simply do not have the spiritual strength, the intestinal fortitude, um, the, the stomach to wage war, to live our life in, in sacrifice to Yahshua HaMashiach. We're bad off as a people. We really truly are. And again, most of us just simply are not ready for truth. Uh, we think we are, but we're not. I hope, and it is my hope, that you can stay in the fight. It's my hope that you can endure hardness as a good soldier. It's my hope that you can stay sanctified, because I believe me, I know that the only, there's only going to be a few of us that's going to enter in. So my speech is not going to become more pleasant to the flesh, but the spirit man will enjoy every single bit of it. Those who are actively pursuing and actively working on a real, true, serious relationship with Yahshua. I don't know what it is tonight, but I have difficulty breathing back here for some reason. Maybe I'll drop this seat and get a little bit more. Yeah. Now, I'm really low, ain't I? All right. But anyway, I want you all to understand very, very much. I really, truly do. Um, that the devil is after your soul. And when you start embarking on deliverance, spiritual warfare, when you start... Um, attacking his kingdom. You see, the devil has a way that he view things. As long as he's oppressing you, depressing you, making your life a living hell and keep you under oppression, he's fine. He loves it. But when as soon as you start attacking him, as soon as you start living, I'm going to say a key word, living, which means doing, living, which means doing what that word says, you are going to find out real quick, fast, in a hurry to how many people are sincerely submitted to Satan's kingdom. Because the attack is going to come out against you unbelievable in this life. You've never encountered nothing like it before in your history of living. You've lived in the world. You've endured the things in the world. You've rubbed elbows with the world. You even went to the world's religions and churches, and everything was fine. But as soon as you start keeping these commandments, is it not an odd thing that takes place? Is it not? Is it not a surprise what takes place? The viciousness, the attacks, and the attitudes of people that come against you. It is utterly amazing what takes place when you just start obeying the creator of the universe and you really truly find out how few 
They really truly are. I hope you can hang in there. I really truly do. Do not let sin be your ruin. That's why I try my best to be an inspiration to each and every last one of you. Um, woe unto you when men speak well of you. People are not going to speak well of you. They're just simply not going to do it. I know. I have, I, I'm never able to face any of my accusers that accuse me. I have people misrepresent me, hating me, lying on me, and I've done nothing to these people. Uh, but I know one thing about it, and I'll say it once, say it a thousand times, there's nothing about their lives that you would follow. It's totally amazing. I'm not going to waste too much time because, like I said, I'm only going to be here an hour, and I'm about to cut it off. If we can get you in, get you in. If you have a question, go ahead and make it known. Um, so we don't take up too much time from the saints of the most high God. We're going to try to run through this as quick as possible. Um, because I do love coming in here and, and actually, um, uh, answering your questions. Um, they're very important. Thank you each and every last one of for your letters of support. We had, a, um, brother Chris up in Canada, his wife, they had a nice Hebrew child. They had a spending them had a nice Hebrew child. Um, Sister, uh, brother Chris out in Kansas had a nice little Hebrew child too. Have a lot of girls lately, boy and two girls. And um, brother Chris had a boy. Uh, Elder Spinney had a girl, and brother Chris also in Kansas had a little girl. Um, and and they all been born healthy. It's just a beautiful, beautiful thing. I'm I'm just excited and elated. Um, I hope that your strength is not small. Think about this. Some of you, man, you, you feel like, man, I done been through hell and high water. Or well, try living 25 years of this. Where everybody is against you. Where you're ostracized. Talked about, ridiculed. Derided, chided, scorned. Nobody's for you. Everybody's doing everything they can to hinder you. Nobody's for you but the most high God. Um. One day we're going to be ruling the kingdom. Alas, I made a very interesting video today. Um, talk about Gentiles grafted in. We set the record straight. People may not like our straight talk, but it is straight talk. But, hey, oh well, it is what it is. Let's go to Junior. Call number 929-929. This is Pastor Dow. You're on the Straight Radio Radio Broadcast. How can I help you out, Brother Junior? Shabbat Shalom, Pastor Dale. Shabbat Shalom, Junior. Man, it's the first time in a long time you being the first one in the call of queue. <laughs> yes, sir. Um, yes, um, keep preaching, Pastor. Keep preaching, keep praying the fire so I can move myself deeper. So, you know, I'll come and pass all clean so I don't defile the Messiah's blood. I know I don't want to do that, but that's a big cost to me. Right. I don't want to do that. Hallelujah. You know what I'm saying? So keep burning. I'll, I don't give a damn about the flesh. I'll give a damn. I don't give a damn about the flesh. I give a damn about the spirit. That I give a damn about. Yes, sir. I, don't, I ain't wrong. Right, yeah. No. So keep burning it. You know what I'm saying? You know, bless you, Pastor. That's all we got in each other because um, you're not doing nothing. No, there ain't nothing else in this world. So keep on burning the fire, please. Yes, so sir. I'm full of mercy. So I've had, I've had good discernment. And myself and other people to help things out. You know what I'm saying? So keep bringing the fire. Bless you, Pastor. Shabbat Shalom. Take care. Press Shabbat Shalom, my brother Junior. Shabbat Shalom. Let's go to New York. Brother Dominic. Brother Dominic, 718718. It's Pastor Dow. We're going to serve you radio broadcast. I can have a brother Dominic. Shabbat Shalom, my pastor. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom, my brother. Shabbat Shalom. How can I help you, sir? Um, I didn't have much to say. I just wanted to call and say Shabbat Shalom to you and the Saints. Um, I know we came down there for a specific reason, so I just wanted to know. I mean, I just wanted to notify the Saints that everything is going very smoothly with the young one. So the really? father came through, and um, everything is going very, 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 very smoothly. That's good. So, I knew it was going to take a little time. Yeah. I knew it was going to take a little time, but that's all right. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, um, the Father came through, and uh, we thank you so much for your prayers. We thank you for your commitment. And, um, yeah, Pastor, being on the land is amazing. And 
honestly, I did not want to leave. I know everybody says that, but things that have not been on the land, <laughs> it's truly, you go on the land and you do not want to leave. Coming back to the world, it's kind of like a <laughs> shotgun in the face. But, hey, um, I just want to say Shabbat Shalom and also, Pastor, I did not forget about you. And, um, yeah, Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom, son. Shabbat Shalom. King Gun. Let's go to Missouri to Pastor Corey. Uh, call number 816-816. This is Pastor Dow. You on the Straight Way Truth Radio broadcast. I can help you, Pastor. Shabbat Shalom, Pastor Dow, Israel. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom, Pastor. I can help you. Well, Pastor, I don't know if you received that text from me, but, um, I just got off the phone with a brother who uh, just gave some news that is it is quite the deal. Well, his niece uh, was raped by two Caucasian men, and uh, it's a, it's 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 a stir up going on. And uh, I had to talk to him pretty pretty extensively because he was ready to leave here and go drive to Texas and just lay it all on the line. Mm. And here's the deal. <clears throat> I-49-242, pass it out. What is your take on that? And now that first, now that we're in the spiritual, first that was physical, now we're in the spiritual. Well, we have to understand that when the laws and statutes and commandments was given, um, they were given to us at the time when we were free people. Uh, now that we're under... Um, captivity right now you know we, we don't get to exercise a lot of those freedoms and liberties because we don't have our governing ruling kingdom in place right now uh, and that's the reason why an eye for an eye and two for two it, it, it's a uh, it, you know it worked for us um, we don't have a temple right now we don't have a priesthood we don't have a governing authority uh, that would actually you know they could understand this because when you go read our scriptures it's obvious what our people did. The law is the law, and the law don't change. It's just like, like man's laws, but being in captivity and being under this captivity right here, uh, there are certain things that, that we just simply can't do. It's not that it's not lawful to do. It's just that we can't do. Now, you can do it, but you're going to suffer the consequences yeah. of man. So, uh, But Yah is not going to condemn you. But if you're willing to go ahead and cross that line and take that, that's, that's on you. Right. Yeah. But that's what I was telling them, Pastor. I just wanted to make sure I was telling them right because, you know, I like I'm like you. I know the law is what it says, but you know, I just told him, I said at this point, you know, we, we get ready to head into another war as well, brother. You don't need to be getting, you know, locked up behind bars. Mm -hmm. Knowing that, that that everything can already come down, you don't want to be behind there when this come down. Not not to start it, you know. Hey, and, did they did they catch know, the, the people? Thing, well, they they haven't caught the people. I don't even know how. What's the extent of it? I just talked to him in kind of detail about why he wanted to leave, and you know what he said that happened was pretty deep. He said that um, you know she was a you know she was a uh virgin woman, you know, had not, you know, done anything as far as that regard, had not uh, been involved with nobody, and the guys was trying to talk to her, she didn't want to have nothing to do with them, so uh, they end up uh, giving her something to drink, and it had some type of drug in it, so they drug her out of there, and they had her for a long time. They broke her arm, her, uh, her eyes were shut. They knocked her teeth out the front of her mouth. Uh, they raped her uh, and then uh, stabbed her between her legs a bunch of times, mutilating her. Jesus. So, Brother, I can understand yeah, this so, passion and anger, man, because it makes me want to go and make some heads roll right now, brother. I know. Dang. I know. And where was she at, brother? She she was at some she was at some party. Ah, see that there we go, Pastor. There we go. That's the problem right here. That is the problem. You in the lion's den. 
You're in the devil's house, yep. and you shouldn't be there. I can understand that yep. his passion of want to go and take vengeance, and I really truly do. But when you get these dumb, stupid young people that will not listen to reason, and they put themselves in that kind of position, Pastor, I ain't got nothing to say. I, I, I don't have anything to say on it. I really, because she is at a place that a daughter of Zion, if she's a daughter of Zion, she shouldn't be there. Right. It's a hurtful thing. It's a very painful thing to hear. But the bottom line is, you young people, you going to learn. You are going to learn. You really do that. But many of you are going to learn the hard way. The hard way. And I hate that, to know that this guy is going through that because even though uh, she was at the wrong place, she still didn't deserve that. But we are in Satan's world. That's what we got to comprehend and understand. Jesus, help us, Father. Yeah. Yeah, I know, Pastor. I know we, you know, it's it's been so much. I mean, I'm, I'm like you, Pastor. You know, it's the being, and we, we ain't nowhere near being in the faith walk as long as you have by a long shot. And I was just talking to some of the brothers today on just how some of these things really come to weigh in on you because... Satan starts, you know, when he know you serve in righteousness and you know that you stand mm. for setting the people free. It's just so many things that come up. You know, they doing so much stuff with this court thing we were dealing with with sister. Now they, you know, they trying to turn it back over to the state of Kansas and they now, you know, maybe looking for her to try to get her back locked up and it's just a thousand things that's going on. You know, that and a bunch of other unnamed things, Pastor, just fighting spiritually, fighting to the highest heights. Pastor, I know. Uh, I, I, had to, I had to go last night uh, all the way to Nashville to get a brother out of jail. Uh, just unbelievable. Uh, that's the reason why I'm, I'll talk to you about it a little later, uh, not on the air, but that's one reason why I'm so tired, because I ain't hardly got any rest. I tell you, you know it is ever since Tabernacles Pastor, the attack and the assault that has been going on with us ever since y'all came down and talked to us and that spiritual move we've had. Yeah. Mm, mm, mm. I'm telling you. But I you know, know what? Pastor, I, well, I got up. Pastor Go you, you t t tell that young man, tell that man this, that hey, I understand. Day is coming. You know, we got, you know, for instance, uh, I'm um by nature, you you know this, Pastor. You yourself, you got the same spirit. We're warriors. We ain't running from nothing. Yes, if you're going to throw down, we're going to throw down, damn it. That's all there is to it. That's all there is to it. But as I get older, I have to start making sound, wise choices and decisions because I have a lot to lose naturally. Number one, the people yes, don't get, they wouldn't be able to get to hear my voice. I understand Pastor Fox's words. Uh, when he says, Pastor, you need to let them brothers get out there in front of you because the last thing we need is you to be locked up in jail. Yes, sir. And, um, man, I tell you, brother, because, man, I, I'm just, you you know what I'm saying, Pastor, but, man, I tell you, yes, we, we got to choose our battles wisely. Yeah. Pastor, we're going to stay lifted up in prayer for, and keep fighting. I didn't get I didn't get that text, Pastor. Dang. Wow. Mm. Yeah, well, I don't know what happened. Yeah, I sent it about 17. It may come through late. Okay. Damn, yeah, Pastor. Right. You just hold it down, Pastor. Yes, Keep the faith, all right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Bless you, Pastor. Love you. Good bye, Shalom, Saints. Shabbat shalom, shabbat shalom. I'm telling you, man, I, I feel the challenges in my heart right now. It just, I mean, my heart just, people don't get it. Man, my spirit started rising up here and stuff like that. But, women, why are you at there at them places out there with them Gentiles? You know, wait, she must not be a believer. Anymore. I'm going to leave this alone. Let's go on. Sister, Ad, Sister Ayana, call number 484. 484 in Pennsylvania. This is Pastor Dow. You know, Sherry 230 or broadcast. I can help you, Sister Anna. Shabbat Shalom, Pastor. Shabbat Shalom, Brother Sister. Uh, Israel. Um, Pastor, I just want to say that I'm 
Hey, Shabbat Shalom, sister. How are you? How can I help you? Um, I just wanted to let you know that I was, like, I'm, um, I recently made, like, you know, a YouTube page so I can watch and be updated as you post things. And I just wanted to let you know that you really made me think with your recent question, would you rather be a part of a tribe or a nation? And I really want to look into what these words mean, not what we're taught by, you know, Webster, but according to our natural heritage that we love, so I can get a true answer and I can answer you truthfully. From what I learned by doing due diligence, what you tell us to do when I come down that Passover. And I was also curious, did you have an answer as of yet? Did I have a what? An answer to that question yet? Yes, I've already posted the video. It's up on YouTube. It's about 30 minutes long. Oh, okay. I didn't see that part. I just seen the, um, the question. Yeah, it's up. Thank you. Oh, and Sister Elijah wanted to speak to you. All okay. right. Shabbat Shalom, Pastor. How you doing, daughter? You behaving? Yes, sir. I'm doing good, too. Okay. <laughs> good in your boys. You, too. Bless you. Bless you, Shalom. Shalom. Bless y'all. It's good to hear them boys. Daughters, man, I can't begin to... Oh. Israelite women... Do not belong in no parties. The only party you need to be at is the Feast of Tabernacles, Feast of Trumpets, Day of Atonement, Unleavened Bread, Passover, Feast of First Fruits, and Sukkot. I mean, and um, Pentecost. There's the only parties you need to be at. Oh, mercy. Ooh, well, let's go to Virginia. Call number 571-571, area code 571. This is Pastor Dow, you're on a Sherby 230 broadcast. How can I help you there in Virginia? Shalom. Shalom. Uh, this is Brother Christopher, Virginia. Hey, Bro Pastor. Um, Brother who? I got a question. Brother Chris from Virginia. All right, what's your question, Brother Chris? Um... I always had a problem when it came to vows and swearing oaths. Yes. Um, because I never, I never had a full comprehension of what it meant. Um, I know one blog talk you talked about uh, vows extensively, and I thank you for it, or I thank the Father. But um, what is swearing an oath, and how does one do that? Well, when you go and you read in the scriptures, you'll see that people bind themselves with an oath. That means, you, you, you've, um, for instance, a military enlistment is an oath. You, I, I'm, I'm going to use something naturally to get you to understand. So when you go and you raise your right hand, you're swearing an oath to fulfill your duty, term, and obligations for the amount of time that you, you've enlisted for. Is that making sense? Yes, sir. That's what an oath is. Um so I hope that helps, you know, pretty much in a nutshell after you listen to the broadcast some time ago when I talked about this, that it gives you a little bit of understanding of what an oath is. And for instance, wow. you know, and another thing is you got people that will bind themselves together and make an oath to actually go out and murder and kill someone thinking that they're doing y'all service. That's a bad oath. But yet and still people, they, they stick by stuff like this. So see, you don't want to be caught in, 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 you know, swearing false oaths or making oaths. But if you make a vow to the Most High God, the scriptures teach you that you're, you, you ought to not to defer to, to pay it. Right. There was people who had, okay. who had made an oath. Uh, some men did over in Acts 19 that they was going to kill Paul. Uh, they they fasted and everything and stuff. The whole nine yards and said they were not going to eat until they determined that they were going to accomplish their mission. Woo, boy, I tell you, that's a mess, isn't it? <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> I'm very familiar with it. Um, thank you, sir. Because over and over and over, I read um, every time the our people would swear by an oath, it was by Elohim. And even Yah himself lifted up his hand to heaven and said that he lived forever. And I just noticed that 
a trend of like lifting up the hand, but I wasn't sure. But thank you, sir. You're welcome. Shabbat Shalom. Let's go to Brother Mike in New York. Call number 646-646. This is Pastor Dow. You're on the Street Truth Radio Broadcast. I can help you there, Brother Mike. Shabbat Shalom, Pastor Dow. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Uh, bless you, Brother Mike. I can help you. No, oh, Pastor, I just called the man. Just let you know I love you, man. I love everybody over there. I miss you all. And um, I can't wait to see y'all next month at the end of the month. And um, that's all, Pastor. Just all right. Everybody. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Good hearing your voice. Shabbat Shalom. Hey, you know, here in about a couple of weeks, myself, Elias, and the other teenagers, we're going to um, um, make a video. For those of you who have never been to the land, never been here to celebrate a feast, um, to make things like, you know, make life easier. We're going to put up a video tent, some of the things that you should bring with you, because uh, we're all going to be sleeping out. We're all going to have a nice, wonderful time. The weather should be beautiful. Should be beautiful. Uh, glory to the King. So y'all stay tuned for that. Uh, let's go to Maryland. Call number 443. 443. This is Pastor Dow. You're on the Street Tube Radio broadcast. I can help you there in Maryland. Shabbat Shalom, Pastor. Shabbat Shalom. How you doing? This is Brother Brad Allen, straight away of Maryland. We just wanted to call in, Pastor, said thank you. Uh, we appreciate all that you do. Uh, we want to give the praise to the Most High. Uh, we t t t took a look at your video, um, uh, which is disturbed. I was speaking on disturbed, uh, your teachings, man. I just wanted to give you all, uh, give you a, a, a thanks, man. Um, Continue to do what you do. You're very encouraging to us, and we can't wait to see you at Passover. Well, glory to the King. Y'all stay the course, all right? Stay the course. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, Pastor. We shall. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Shabbat shalom. Uh, Shabbat shalom. Israel, men of Israel, you remain strong. Do not give <clears throat> up your life for this mess and this sin that's in this world. Don't give up your life that the Most High God is giving you the eyes to see and the ears to hear. Stay the course. See, it's all about this. Having a made up mind. You can do it. You can do it even better if you had, if you were surrounded by Israelites that were strengthening you. Let's go to New York. Call number 347-347. This is Pastor Dow. You're on Straight Street Truth Radio Broadcast. I can help you. Hello, Pastor Dow. Shalom. Shalom, brother. Shalom, brother. My name is Jason. Uh, I'm by way in New York. Uh, fellowship with Brother Lucius uh, Felix out in New Jersey. Hallelujah. Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. I've been trying to talk to you a long time, brother. Many years I've watched you. Many years. I I'm calling in now to, to, to uh, verbally say in front of all the world of Israel that I'm ready to, you know, come get baptized. And if you would have me come down and be a Passover with you and your lovely family, your people, uh, just just shalom, brother. It's, it's just a blessing, brother. You, you, you're amazing, brother. And be encouraged, brother. You are you are here. You are everything. We, we, we love you, man. We love you. Father is with you. We know it. Oh, well, hallelujah. So I'm, I'm, yes. I'm humble. Yes, sir. Yes. Come on down. Yes, yeah, so if you would have me, I humbly, humbly, humbly come, and, I, and I'm looking to be baptized, you know, just in that water, brother, and um, I just, uh, I really don't really know what else to say. <laughs> well, hallelujah, I understand. You'll have plenty to say when you see me, I promise you. <laughs> okay, yes, sir, yes, sir. <laughs> yeah, but hey, All right, you, so you I, in... I guess I'll just be in touch, I don't know. All right, you're in good hands up there with Brother Felix, man. You're in very good hands, a true Israelite in whom there is no guile. Just a true Israelite. Looking forward to seeing you. Make sure you call the dining hall and get your name put down on the list and let them know uh, that you associate, that you are fellowshipping with Brother Felix. Okay, brother? Okay, yes, sir. I, I will definitely. Uh, that, that's the 609, right? Uh, I called the, the 609 number, the area code. That's the, uh, the straightway that you have on, on the video behind you. Mm, yes, 615. I'm sorry, 615. Okay, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. 688 that, that is the number, correct. Okay, yes, I'm sorry. I, I was definitely being to... And Felix is amazing, man. He kept me on course, kept me on point, kept me strong. 
You keeping us strong. We are strong for you, Pastor, and you stay strong too, brother. And get some rest, brother. Hallelujah. Peace. I will. Shabbat shalom. All right, sir. Thank you. Shabbat shalom, sir. Thank you. You know, I've got a strong support group behind me um, in, in the ministry. Not only just the St. Chair Straightway, but you have this head to the fellowship, head to the assembly. Uh, you got like a, a cool James Brad Allen out there in Maryland. Uh, that's Straightway in Maryland. I have Brother Juan in Straightway, Columbia. Brother Steve and Sister Wind up there in Canada with, along with Brother Ugly. And I'm naming just the, you know, the, the heads of these different fellowships and stuff like this. Brother Felix up there in New York, New Jersey area. Uh, Pastor Corey uh, out in, in Kansas City, Missouri. Uh, Pastor Joe Fox out there in Arkansas. Uh, Pastor Tatum in Chicago, Illinois. Um, um, uh, Brother Mitchell in Texas. I'm there with Brother Greg, Brother... Um, um, but Randy there in Kentucky, um, Brother Josh there in Dallas, Texas, uh, Elder Rufus uh, and the Saints of the Most High, Yah down there in Georgia, along with Brother Al uh, down there at the other community there in Georgia. Um, Al's there with, within me and and um, uh, and the other brothers. Um, I mean, I'm trying to think all these. I got all these names in my head right now. Oh, boy, who else? I hope I'm not missing nobody. I don't want nobody to fit. Then we have Mother Bullock and Sister Zaz out there in North Carolina that's holding things down. We got Elder Austin, uh, them out of Straightway down there in South Carolina. Um, then we got Brother Word at Straightway out there in Arizona. Um, then we have across the pond, Brother Case in the Netherlands. Um, uh, brother Mike in England, uh, Brother Freddie in Germany. And speaking of that, Brother Freddie, did y'all ever get that situation resolved um, with the wipe and the head covering thing? If not, shoot me an email. Uh, shoot me an email. Man, I tell you, I, I'm just one man that's pulled so in a thousand different ways. I appreciate y'all having patience with me. Um, I don't want to miss nobody. I can't. I, hey, if I don't call, don't be offended. At least you're part of us. Um, you got Brother D. Jerry and them down there in Florida. Um, man, I go on all day long. There's just saints. Although I have a strong support base, people who are sincere, serious-minded Israelites. Um, and it's just the truth. It is just the truth. Brother Reuben there in Alabama, speaking of that. Uh, let's go to call number 205. 205, Brother Reuben there in Alabama. This is Pastor Dow. You're on a straight way to the radio broadcast. How can I help you, Brother Ruben? Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom, Brother Ruben. Shabbat Shalom. How can I help you, sir? Uh, well, uh, this week right here was uh, my first week, you know, out driving by myself uh, for Snyder. And uh, I just wanted to give a shout out to Brother Victor because he, he really blessed me this week. He, you know, I know he had his own workload to do, and, man, he had to help me every step of the way. And uh, I just appreciate him just taking the time out and just, I probably wouldn't have made it through the week without him. Without Brother uh, Victor. Yeah, he hears you. He's sitting right here in the tabernacle. That's a friend that's sticking closer yes, than sir. a brother, isn't it? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. He sticks very close to me. And, uh... When I was out driving, I mean, it just kind of came to my mind as I was driving because I'm already nervous, and I'm, I'm pretty much taking a step out on the water because I've been doing the same thing for a profession since I was a little child. Right. And uh, just stepping out here and doing this, you know, I've been real, uh, the spirit of fear been conquering me, and, you know, I've been nervous, and then I realized how easy it was to, you know, really mess something up. And I thought to myself that, this is just telling me you need to stick close to y'all because that's the only thing that's going to keep, you know, a disaster from happening. I don't got time to be, you know, fooling around with sin, tap dancing with the word. Just do your job and, and and get back, you know, get back with your family. You got that right. I just, uh, just wanted to, yes, sir. I just wanted to just thank Brother Victor and, and just bless the saints and Shabbat Shalom. Hey, Brother Reuben, in quietness and confidence shall be your strength. 
pull yourself up, bite bootstraps, man up, go ahead and pay attention to detail. All the training that you've had was for your edification, exhortation, and comfort. Trust in those who are in authority over you that know about the business. Call the brethren when you need their help and keep that confidence and drive on like a true Israelite. You got it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right. Bless you, Brother Reuben. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Glory to the King. Let's go to Pennsylvania. Brother Arcelio, this is Pastor Dow. You're on the Survey 2 radio broadcast. Um, how can I help you there, Brother Arcelio in Pennsylvania? Shabbat shalom, Pastor. Shabbat shalom. How's everything? Oh, man. Everything's all right. It's all right. It's all right. Uh, how can I help you, sir? Uh, I'm just, um, just wanted to call and say Shabbat shalom and send some love. Uh, we had some challenges, but we're um, we're above water and we're we're doing well. Everybody's um, dealing with themselves and uh, just searching our own hearts. So thank you for teaching. Thank you for being honest. And Shabbat Shalom, Israel. Hallelujah. Bless you, sir. Shabbat Shalom. All right, let's go to Brother Steve there in New York. Call number three four seven three four seven. This is Pastor Dow. You on the Survey Two Radio broadcast? How can I help you, Brother Steve? Ah, Shabbat Shalom, my shepherd, Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Hallelujah. I, I, I guess we got a good report, right? Oh, yes, sir. Amazing report. Uh, first off, I want to say thank you to my true family, those that do the will of my father. Thank you so much for opening your doors to me and my family last weekend and pouring out all over us such true, amazing love, not just in words, but in action. Um, it's been a struggle this week, and I think fervent prayer of Dale much, whether it's prayer of war or the way you taught us to pray, the way we pray for our enemies. And the war continues each and every day, but thank you for teaching us nonetheless how to walk the straight and narrow path and stick into the court. Yes, Pastor. Very, very amazing good news. Um, my family is good, great, amazing. Um, my brothers and sisters, especially my youngest sister, she's doing great, amazing. She has overcome a lot. And I know she still has a lot to learn, as we all do in this walk. But... When we hold to the Father, there is no wall that cannot be broken. It's true. No mountain that cannot be moved. And we are all doing great, Pastor. Hey, it, it takes persistence, don't it? Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir, Pastor. I tell you what, I got a and, good, uh, I got a good support base here, straightway, don't it? Oh, yes, sir, Pastor. Warriors, all of us, all of us. I'm, uh, I want to have my sister say a few words with Koma. Sure. Shalom, 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 Pastor. Shalom, who am I speaking with? This is Sister Valerie. Sister Valerie. Do y'all hear that straight way? Hallelujah. Well, Sister, um, Hallelujah. you're doing good, huh? You're overcoming, huh? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Well, that's I, all right. I really wanted to thank... I really, really, really wanted to thank everybody. Um, Man, it's just... 
I, I just, I really got to thank all of you. I, I thank you for your love. Thank you for your support. Just, man, I just, there is no way to express how much love I was shown during that time. And I definitely have to, if, it's a, if you don't mind me, um, do you mind if I give a shout out to um, a couple of the sisters that helped me? Don't mind at all. Don't mind at all because you had a plethora of people around. You had brothers, you had sisters, you had probably well over, I don't know, maybe 20-something hours of prayer going at you the whole time and deliverance, man. So give a shout out. Hallelujah. Thank you so much, Pastor. I just want to thank every single one of the sisters, every single one of the brothers that helped me through this whole thing because I couldn't have done this alone. And I thank the most high the most for having you all just really help me and I just appreciate that so much thank you pastor thank you straightway thank you just thank you thank you thank you well you sound good I want you to get strong in the mind I don't want you listening to nobody else but me when it comes to preaching and teaching do you hear me yes sir <laughs> that's what you do you cut on the Judah system through the week you keep yourself immersed in that word to continue to keep overcoming do you hear me Yes, sir. All right. Anything else, sister? No, sir. It's nice hearing from you, Pastor. Bless you. We love you. Bless you. We love you. Well, I love you all, too. <laughs> all right. It's about Shalom. Shalom. All right, bro, Steve. She sounds good. Uh, yes, sir. Hallelujah. You remember I told yeah. you that this uh, was going to take a little time? Yes, sir, you there's a lot of spiritual walls and doors and everything. It, it, remember, deliverance always works. It may seem like that it's not working, but remember this. Deliverance always works. It always does. Hallelujah. Glory to the King. Hallelujah. Thank you, Pastor. So much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Well, my brother. All right. Bless you. Sorry. Bless you all. Love you so much. And uh, we're going to keep the fight. Um, I think we have a very strong young sister growing here. And I know that the devil attacks those that he fears the most. So I'm going to make sure she keeps that straight in our path as her older brother. And to shepherd over me and my siblings. And yeah, I will. And we will all be warriors of the Most High Yah, his battle ox. Full pledged. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord to the King. Bless you, bro, Steve. <clears throat> Bless you. <clears throat> a lot of people don't know what's going on, but I will I'll let you in on a little bit of this. Um, I'll give you a summary. <clears throat> Apparently, there was some type of demonic spirits that end up attacking Brother Steve's younger sister. Uh, not only did he have to fight natural family in order to press against wind and tide to get here straightway, but Brother Steve and all his brothers and sisters grabbed their little sister and they jumped in a vehicle and they drove from New York, something where somewhere between 15 and 19 hours to come down here to straightway because her natural family had put her in the hospital. The medical profession could not do nothing for her. Zero. Brother Steve, when they got here, Brother Steve, because she was non-responsive. She was not eating. She was not talking. Her eyes were not open. She could not even walk. You people hear me? Brother Steve had to carry her everywhere on this land because she was not responding. She was breathing, but she wasn't responding. Brother Steve, against wind and tide, exercised faith along with his brothers and sisters, got to go ahead, came in a straight way, and we dealt with our most severe case of demonic possession to this date. Oh, your ruler of the universe is something. And I don't mind telling you that it took every, almost every single Israelite brother and sister in the ministry here straightway. 
those who participated. Other people had other things they needed to do. But those who participated, both on the land and off the land, it took us persistent prayer, persistent laying on of hands, persistent deliverance, morning and evening. It took that. The sisters dedicated in it, continue over and over and over again. And before they left the land, she was walking on the land under her own power with her eyes open talking. I told Brother Steve when we first got here, I said, boy, the devil thinks he's somehow this was going to take a little bit. It's going to take a little time. John saw the multitude of the overcomers. And all of them were worshiping Yahweh. Some of them were praising. Some of them were shouting. But they all were worshiping Jesus. Oh, praise Jesus. And I'll say it a thousand times again. Oh, praise ye the Lord. Glory to the King. We thank you, Father, for your mighty deliverance in your outstretched hand. And giving us the power of healing and deliverance in the magnificent name of Jesus. We're going to lift him up. We're going to lift him up. So to hell with you world and your damn medical profession. We're going to stick with the king. Glory to the king. Thank you, Father. And all of Israel, your love was shown to that family like never before. I'm telling you, y'all ain't never in this earth. You know what? The earth is not even worthy of us as straightway. You're not. The earth is not even worthy of us as straightway. You're not. Period. But believe you me this. We're going to be ruling in the kingdom and you're going to be our servants. Let's go to Georgia. Call number seven. Call number four. Seven eight four seven eight four seven eight. This is Pastor Dow. You're on the street with you radio broadcast. How can I help you? How you doing, Pastor? Shalom, shalom. All right, what's up? Hey, I'm new to the Israelite culture and the nation. I do got a question for you that, that I want you to respond to. Uh, I come from a Christian background here in Georgia, and I just wanted to see can I get. Get your answer on Acts 11, verse 26. Uh, I know that even though they start calling themselves Christians, they only talk to the Jews. Is Can you kind of... A lot of Christians go through the fashion period. That's when the Israelites turn to the Christians at that point. Can you kind of give me a response on that? Okay, sure I can. When you're dealing with Acts 11, 26, you have to understand this. Number one, the Bible from the very beginning is a book and a history about the Hebrew people. We have had the Greeks and the Romans at this point right here, uh, along with the Americans, take our book, translate it, and then insert their words. For instance, there was no such thing as a church. They were known as the assembly. But you have to look behind these words in order to get it. So when it says, and when they found him, they brought him unto Antioch, and they came to pass a whole year, they assembled themselves with the church and taught much people. And the disciples were first called Christians at Antioch. The disciples were never called Christians at Antioch. Because Christianity never did come into play until the 4th century under Constantine in 325 AD at the Council of Nicaea. See, it's about being historically sound and knowing the difference between translation and translation. Because there's no way that the people who are Israel and who Jesus said in Matthew 15, 24, he has not been sent to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And then Paul called himself a Hebrew of the Hebrews of the tribe of Benjamin, circumcised the eighth day. Um, Peter and them who went to Judah to do the preaching and teaching. And all of a sudden that we're going to just throw away the nation of Israel and start preaching to a bunch of Christians when Christianity started with the Roman Catholic Church. So it's about knowing pinsmanship and knowing what these people have done in order to be able to comprehend the scriptures that are going on today. Remember, line must be upon line, precept upon precept. Here a little and there a little. Are 
Are you there? Yes, sir, Pastor, and I, I thank you for the understanding. I just wanted to get some clarification on that, and I do appreciate it, sir. Yes, sir, you're welcome. Go back into my archives and do some more study on that. What's your name? So my name is Oscar Willis. I just started following you on Facebook, man, and uh, I appreciate your word, man, and you got a, got a good word, brother, and I, I look forward to following you, man, and uh, get some more of your word. Well, hallelujah. If you're there in Georgia, get in contact with our Georgia Assembly. We got two of them down there. Get in contact with them. I don't think y'all have any in Miller, Georgia, though. I think they're all in that line, I believe. And that's about two miles away. But, you know, that ain't far, man, to get, get some good word and, and sure ain't. being able to fellowship with Yeah, right. you right. get around them saints, boy, they can answer a lot of questions. It ain't nothing for, but, a, but a thing to just drive an hour or two away to go over there and visit and spend the Shabbat with the saints and be edified. Call the dining hall. Leave your number. Let us know where you're at and stuff, and uh, that way we can put you in touch with some of the saints that are close to you. Yes, sir. I appreciate that. Thank you. All right, my brother. Shabbat shalom. Let's go to California. Call number 925-925. Brother Juwan, this is Pastor Dow. Get on straight with you radio broadcast. How can I help you, Brother Juwan? Nope. One more call after this. Hallelujah. Bless done. you, sir. Hallelujah. Bless you. Bless you, brother. You want this pastor down. I can help you, sir. Yes, okay. Um, uh, let, me, uh, let me try to get my words correct first. I didn't think I was going to make it through. I actually uh, called in the blog talk a little late. Um, but, uh, okay, so I want, I want uh, your opinion uh, or understanding and, and and guidance on um, where seizures are coming from and, and what they're dealing with. The reason why I ask <clears throat> is because uh, my younger brother, who's 24, he used to have seizures when he was a baby. My mom, you know, dealing with the medical profession, put him on medication, and then uh, he was on medic he was on seizure on seizure medication for about a year, and then he hasn't had a seizure since. He's 24 now. The last time he had a seizure, he was about four years old. So it's been about 19, 20 years since he's had a seizure. And um, about a week ago, he had two seizures in one day. Uh, he, so, uh, you know, I didn't really know about it until he was in the hospital. And I went to go see him and I was asking him if he was okay and trying to get some information. <clears throat> but he wasn't really trying to give up too much, too much, some information at all. So I talked to my dad. And, you know, my dad <clears throat> had mentioned that um, family members, you know, on his side of the family are known for having seizures. He said it was hereditary. So the first thing that came to my mind is, okay, we're dealing with a generational curse. So I remember you spoke on a couple of years ago um, about a testimony that you had regarding someone who had a, who was having a seizure on the side of the road inside of a car. Uh, you, remember, you remember speaking on that? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So I remember that, and, and this is going on. So I wanted to get um, any information from you regarding <clears throat> uh, anything about seizures in general, because I know it's a spiritual condition, but mainly not from, from my brother, yes, but it's really because I found out it's a generational curse thing, really. So I'm looking out for myself <laughs> more than anything else. So uh, anything you have on that one? Uh, Greatly help, sir. Well, Jesus talked about this. You have to rebuke the dumb and deaf spirit. That doesn't mean dumb as in illiterate and stuff, but it's the spirit. Uh, that's the root spirit that's behind seizures. Okay. Go and read about what Christ okay. said about because the dumb and deaf spirit. Right, right. Okay. I will surely go back and, and, and look at that. And I just didn't know... Uh, literally what spirit it was. i just trying to figure everything out regarding that, <clears throat> especially when I found out that, quote-unquote, it, it's from what my dad says, it's hereditary. So uh, something that, you know, I'm just going to fast and get after and, and, and make sure I, I have no part with it. So thank you very much. Uh, Shabbat Shalom to all the saints scattered. And uh, thank you, Pastor. Appreciate it very, very much. All right, my brother. Shabbat Shalom. Glory to the King. All right, last call for tonight, Brother Jerry in Florida, 786. Then I'm done. I'm going to rest. This is Pastor Dow, you know, serving two radio broadcasts. How can I help you, Brother D. Jerry? Shabbat shalom, Pastor Dow. Shabbat shalom, Brother Jerry. Uh, 
watch the loan on my beloved pastor. You watch the loan, brother pastor. Jerry. All right, I can help you, sir. Yes, sir. Um, I had a question for you, Pastor. Um, I um, I, I was. I was able to sit down with the midwife that's working with me and um and my wife Sister Larryel, and um I had to let her know, you know um straightforward um that we're not going to be signing no birth certificates at the end of this, of, of this birth, and um uh, and I actually know this midwife because um um I knew her before I came into the truth and everything, and she was the midwife then, and, and we asked her to be our midwife um for my for my wife. She said that she has to submit um, a certificate of, uh, of birth to the state showing that um, the birth was taking place. But I told her, I said, you know, whatever you, you have to do, we're still not signing that birth certificate. So um, she went ahead and said, well, um, the father doesn't have to sign it because at least need the, um, the signature of the mother. And I said, if I ain't signed it, my wife ain't signed it. So what do you say on that, Pastor? She's trying to bait you. She's trying to bait you to give interest of the state uh, because that's her training. She can only function after her training. Um, if they can't go past the father, they'll go to the mother. You don't want neither one of y'all's signature on that birth certificate. Matter of fact, you need to check Florida. I don't think it's a law. Matter of fact, there's no law stating that I, if I uh, remember my memory serves me correctly, that you have to have a certificate of birth. Now, you can see the baby is there. Um, I, brother, if I was you, I would try to get in touch with some Israelites or somebody. I don't know, but you get in touch with people like that is just so involved in the system and so involved in the state, brother. They just nothing but agents of the state, brother, and, and they ain't gonna talk to you no other way, brother. So you better watch her if you choose to continue to keep using her. You better watch her. Yes, brother. I, I agree, Pastor, and I will take um, I will take that advice and I will apply it, Pastor. Um, I told her, I told her, I said, look, I said, um, you can do whatever you need to do, but I think it's all my wife is not going to do that birth certificate. I told her, you need to find a way that you'll be able to submit without a sign that paper. And I told her that, um, she said, well, talk to the elders and talk to the pastors and see, you know, um, what, what they have done in the past. They were able to, um, to survive and stay or whatever. I said, well, first of all, it's not a state law for me to sign that birth certificate. You know what I'm saying? And I told her, I'm sure to tell you this because I could have waited to the birth and said, hey, I'm not signing the paper. You know what I'm saying, Pastor? Oh, I get you. I understand. Um, I, like I said, Brother Jerry, you, you should watch her. Sir, I really do. Well, that's, that's all I got for you, Pastor. Um, I thank you for the videos. I've been learning a lot. I mean, I don't even want to listen to the, to the music when I'm driving. All I want to listen to is, is, is all the teachings, Pastor. That's why, that's why I stay edified, and that's why I keep all them demons from coming into my mind. I'm keeping that word in my heart and written within my heart. Hallelujah. All right, Brother Jerry, you stay encouraged, you hear me? Yes, sir. Let me go ahead and let the soft ball rip after if you don't mind. Go ahead. <laughs> Shabbat Shalom. Bless you, Brother Jerry. All right, y'all. Hey, I see y'all Shabbat born now. Bless each and every last one. Sweet, precious, strong, victorious, mighty, overcoming. Thing. I'll soon come to King Yahshua Hamashiach. Jesus the Christ. Shabbat Shalom. King coming. Check out the videos that I've just uploaded. Enough to keep you busy for the next two hours tonight. King coming. Shalom. Thank you for using Blog Talk Radio. Goodbye.